Welcome to Airheads. Coming up, we have hot air, we have air streaming showcasing the best air gunning on YouTube. First, what do pellets mean? Pellets mean prizes, and that's why world champions have gathered to win cash prizes at Lee Valley in Hertfordshire. It is the first HFT Masters. FT Masters is a go. There's passion in HFT and it's clear to see at the first ever HFT Masters. Naturally there's opening night nerves but the car park is filling nicely. Roger and seasoned course designer Ian Bainbridge have spent many months bringing this all together. It's nerve-wracking, let's say that. Uh, but here we are at Lee Valley, the first first venue. It looks it looks a wonderful, wonderful turnout, and I can only say thank you to everybody that that, that have come and and have supported us. Unlike other competitions, competitors are allowed a look around the course before it starts. Another commitment the organisers have made is inclusivity. Ian wants anybody to be able to come along and give it a go. First and foremost, it should be enjoyable and be shootable by all. Uh, whether you're nine years old and coming for the first time to shoot HFT, or a veteran, or a world champion. I mean, uh, today we have three world champions here, uh, but at the same time my course was designed for the nine-year-old who's left-handed or a disabled uh, they will be able to shoot that course, no problem at all. The setting couldn't be better. A sun-dappled bluebell wood isn't bad for a first outing, and Ian has taken advantage of the Lee Valley topography, placing targets high, low, near and far. So what are the chances of someone clearing it? Over the, over the years I've been dead against anybody, anybody clearing any one of my courses. Today, I hope somebody clears it. Whether they will, there's a little bit of breeze coming up. Uh, but as I said, as I said to you just now, it's all there in front of you. There's nothing Mickey Mouse. There's nothing uh, that's going to frighten anybody, whether you're a newbie or whether you're uh, one of the world champions. Uh, it's all there to be shot. Among the competitors is Jamie Chandler. The last time we filmed Jamie, he was trying to shoot an elusive pigeon. Today the targets are there, but they are tricky, and Jamie has even mastered the single shot gold star. A little bit of hope and pray. Bullshit, look at that. Simple as that. Jamie has tried to compete before, but was told his score wouldn't count. Not today. I went to um, a nameless HFT course, I contacted them, and they said I could go around, but unfortunately my score wouldn't count because I'm, I have no hands effectively uh, and I can't shoot prone. Whereas obviously the Masters gives me the opportunity to actually come out here and uh, level the playing field with rather good shots like these guys. So a uh, pretty good day. I have an issue with shooting prone, unfortunately. Um, so instead I shoot seated, rested on my knee. Um, well, forearm rested on my knee, which I think is Roughly the same uh, same stability, if not a little bit less. But um, no, uh, it seems to work for me. Apart from when I'm with guys like this, who are exceptionally good. Uh, but we'll see how we get on. On the other side of the wood, we catch up with the current and ex world champion. Vince is fresh from success at Kelmarsh and has a very neat trick to check wind using wool. Just stuff that you find naturally on the floor. If the wind's not blowing really terribly hard, you just pick it up and drop it, see what way it's going. Can give you the edge. I learned it off the best, my mate Richard Woods. So, it works. He confesses he didn't have the best preparation for Kelmarsh. So, how does he feel about the result? Surprising. <laughs> I think there's a lot more surprised people than me. But, uh, yeah, it, it did surprise me somewhat. But, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it last year. I'd only been shooting six months last year. 18 months this year, so... Um, done quite well I think. But, uh, coming off with uh, 58 on the second day surprised me because most of the night I was up 
uh, running around trying to find some Imodium, so I wasn't in the best of health. <laughs> so. There you go. World champion in 18 months. Not bad going, is it? But he has spent many an hour and fired many a pellet at the Maldon and District Air Rifle Club. Yeah, I think I've got through 15,000 pellets in the last 18 months, so I'll get through a fair few. <laughs> Most of them missing, but hey-ho. <laughs> so how are you feeling about today? How's it gone? Uh, I've, um, well, compared to Richard, not doing too well. I've dropped two already, but uh, the pressure will get the better of him in a minute, so hopefully I'll, I'll do all right by the end of it. The game. Yeah, it is, yeah. I think the more calm you are, the better, you, better scores. Well, for me anyway, the better scores I put in, the more calm I am. So, But it's just having a nice, calm environment, being in lovely surroundings and uh, going along with a nice, well well organised uh, show, it's really good. Fellow Air Arms sponsored shooter and 2014 champion Rudy Goldslade is also here and he's another example of how commitment and a pinch of talent of course can get you to the top of the leaderboard. I've been shooting every every week, shooting the national courses and the world championships and a lot of the club shoots as well. Well I started off, I didn't shoot HFC until about six months after just shooting on the Plinkton range until someone at the gun club just asked me if I could shoot from a peg. So I had a go at that and then shot the competition the following day and really enjoyed it. How are you, how are you sparing so far? Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I'm one down. Didn't take any wind. I thought he was going to take a little bit of wind, but I'm enjoying the course. Halfway through and how is Roger feeling? Five, zero, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen in. Loving the course. It's not too difficult, but it's there's a few little testers out there, hence me being three down. Anyway, that's that. Yeah, I like, uh, as they say, wipe your mouth and carry on. People are enjoying themselves. Uh, we've not had any. Oh, we've had one ceasefire because one of the uh, one of the strings got broken. But other than that, everything's going great. So yeah, all looking good. What is good to see is more experienced shots being paired with newbies, so they learn as they go. There's also a big age range. But come on, girls, there were a few. We need a balance here. There's some seriously good shooting, and after the scores have been collected, ex-world champion Tony Archer and BSA-sponsored shooter Barry Smith are tied on 58. There are also shoot-offs for third and fourth, and in the Springer class for second and third. After a very tense session, we have our first ever winner of the HFT Masters. Barry takes the top prize. Yeah, 58. I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, it's my, it's my PB with the gold star. And uh, the course was tricky. You know, the wind was there, you know, there, there was nothing straightforward at all. I've got all my standards, which is quite rare, and um, I'm happy I'm over the moon. And I'm really happy for Roger and Ian, you know, they put a lot of time and effort into it, and it's just been great. Great day. It really is his day, as he also takes home the top cash prize in the draw, 250 quid. Not a bad day at the office. The winner of the Spring Air Rifle class is 2014 world champion Harry Callagher. He loves his Springer and was only a few targets behind the PCP boys. Uh, PCPs are great, but Springers just all day long. I'd rather pick a Springer up all day long. Love it, challenge, uh, just enjoy it, thoroughly enjoy it. The, well, the most wind I gave it today was three quarters of a mil dot. They do say that Springers take less wind than PCPs. The guys I was shooting with shooting PCPs were giving it one, one and a quarter mil dots, where I was giving it three quarters. So it's great. As everyone packs up, we catch up with Jamie, who put in a very respectable score of 35. You never know what to expect when you turn up to this sort of thing. For me, it can be, I do get a bit funny about you know, a lot of people being around, and uh, to be honest with you, it's been absolutely fantastic. Um, really friendly bunch, everybody inquisitive and happy to watch, but um, you know, it's very, very supportive. It's a, just, yeah, fantastic. One of the uh, most fun things I've done for a while, actually. You can't say fairer than that. The organisers want this series to grow and grow, and for that to happen, they need to offer good competitions, good prizes, and show that shooting sports are open to absolutely everyone. Visit hftmasters.net for more. From shiny trophies to the wooden spoon of news, it is David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. The bill to licence air guns in Scotland is going ahead. Gun owners in some parts of Scotland already face a wait of up to nine months for shotgun and firearm certificates. The new law will add another 500,000 applications to the queue. The Scottish Conservatives refused to endorse the air weapons and licensing bill Scotland and said they would oppose it unless the Scottish Government changes its stance on air gun licensing. Air guns made a small appearance in the UK general election campaign. 
Labour said that Conservative cuts to services were making hospitals unhygienic after Great Western Hospital in Swindon reported that pigeons on its roof had to be shot. However, the Tories said that there were far more pigeons under Labour. It was a productive few days for British rifle shooters in Hanover in Germany. Jen McIntosh set a new British record in the women's air rifle at the international shooting competition, while her sister Sinead McIntosh won gold in the junior women's air rifle. They are pictured here with Katie Gleason, who took a GB junior record and won bronze in the 50 metre prone. The Penrith Red Squirrel Group have a chance of getting a grant of £10,000. Insurance company Aviva is holding a competition for grants from its community fund, but the squirrels only get the money if they get enough votes. Voting is easy. Go to bit.ly forward slash squirrel vote. And finally, staying with squirrels, a photographer has found a clever way of capturing squirrels working out. Photographed in a London garden, these squirrels look like they're lifting weights. Photographer Max Ellis used treats and weights on fishing lines to take the pictures for his son. You are now up to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Now let's have a look at the wider world of air gunning on YouTube. It is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here. This is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Squirrel Hunter's brother is on the trigger at a permission that has not performed recently. They're investigating a feeder emptied by unknown creatures. Next up, Shooter Vermin is also out squirrel shooting with a sub 12 foot pound air rifle testing new equipment. Americans After Squirrels, Neuron 1971 is using a custom Benjamin Marauder pistol in 2 2. More Benjamins. Despite a dose of man flu, Pyramid Air's air gun reporter gamely tries out the Benjamin Bulldog in his 127th episode. If you want a test of the power of the FX Bobcat Mark II, this film from France, shows it in action on a range, hitting tin cans at 140 metres. Air Arms Hunting SA is going a bit more big game these days. A good goose film last month, and now this, guinea fowl hunting at Spot X. Hunter's Vermin, surely the Ted Buyer of UK air gunning, has put out Farmyard Vermin Control 24 after Magpies, Crows and Jack Tours. And finally, the air gun as machine gun. To California, where Air Guns World is using a draws to Blackbird and Umarex's Steel Force and Steel Storm. Click on the links to watch the videos, or you will find them in the film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Now if you don't like those, how about this? Kai at Bryn sporting a beard unboxes and shoots the Air Arms S400 Superlight. Clues in the name. It is a good quality Air Arms air gun that's light. Just £6. Remarkable for a PCB, especially when you consider its conventional design, with barrel over cylinder. Use of poplar wood instead of beech trims nearly half a pound off the weight. The SF400F Superlight is the latest in the popular single-shot S400 line that refuses to lie down and let the multi-shot S410 take over. Designed as a hunting rifle, it is popular in competition too, with three times world field target champion Nick Jenkinson on the original design team. Check out Kai's review on YouTube at Air Arms TV or click the link on the screen. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. Goodbye. How to lure squirrels into bait boxes with the shooter with no hands, Jamie Chandler, plus using thermal on rabbits with Darren Rogers, plus hot air air gun news, plus air streaming. Welcome to Airheads. If you go down to the woods today, you will find our hands-free hunter, Jamie Chandler. He's not here for a teddy bear's picnic, oh no. He's here to sort out a pesky squirrel problem. They have been ravaging his nuts. The pheasants are growing fast, and soon they will be taking flying lessons. Meanwhile, getting nice and fat for the winter are these grey, greedy tree rats. It's not just about saving money on the pheasant food. Farmers and landowners are ordered by the government and asked very nicely by the Forestry Commission to keep on top of the ever-growing grey population. This not only puts a break on them wiping out the dwindling native red squirrels, but also stops damaging trees, crops, wild birds and also Jamie's nuts. To make sure that the job is done, Farmer Tom has come along too. This wood has to be maintained. It's, you know, that's what we've got to do, and that includes squirrel control. It is an important part of any bit of countryside management. 
As they settle down between the trees and the rain showers, let's answer a viewer's question. Just a, a bit of a, an answer to a question I got from a guy called Cameron in New Zealand. He sent me a Facebook message saying, do we require camouflage in the summer in England? I don't know. It's the simplest answer. I don't know what you think. So I've got no idea. But to find out whether we require it or not, as you can see, we're barely camouflaged. We're both almost wearing identical outfits, although Tom's is much smarter. And um, we're 21, I think it is, 21 yards, maybe 22, away from the feeder over there. And pretty much in broad daylight. I mean, yes, I've got a camo cap on, but that's because it's the only one in the car. So, Cameron, we're going to find out. If we get some squirrels, then no, we don't need camouflage. If we don't get some squirrels, then yes, we do need camouflage. What I do know is in the winter, yes, you do, especially with pigeons and stuff. In the summer, well, certainly with pigeons, but with squirrels, don't know, we'll find out. Well, I hope that clears that up. No? Well, what about this? Well, that one didn't see them, but he knows that something isn't right, and he's back only in a few minutes to try his luck again. Sitting quietly, even without camouflage, sometimes grants odd rewards, like seeing this young family of deer popping through the woods only metres away. Back to the squirrels, and now there are two. But the last one still tries his luck. Another brilliant afternoon and dodging showers as well. So lucky with the weather, so lucky. It was throwing it down this morning. It really was, Yeah, it really was. So uh, Cameron from New Zealand's question, to be honest with you mate, today it made no difference, did it? No difference at all. Yeah, um, we could have been out there in, in bright yellow mankinis and I think the squirrels still came in. They had no interest in, in us being there. The deer, obviously that came snuggling through, didn't see us at all until we kind of made it obvious you're there. That fox, there was a fox, we didn't catch it on camera, but wow, that was seven yards from us chasing yeah, that pheasant? Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was amazing, I haven't actually seen that. No, that was, that was, it was quite something actually. Yeah. Countryside stewardship. Protected, done a little bit, done yeah. our part today. Uh, protecting your shoot. Done a lot more, yeah. yeah. Keeping your grumpy keeper happy. <laughs> Never ending battle. <laughs> <laughs> Winners, <laughs> thank you very much. Brilliant. Superb. Thank you, Jamie and Tom. Now from Greys on the Nuts to a Nut on the News, it's David with Hot Air. This is Hot Air. A member of the Scottish Parliament has slammed the introduction of new air gun licensing as chaotic. Dumfrieshire MSP Oliver Mundell says gun owners in the region have been left in a state of uncertainty and many don't know if they're breaking the law. Around 12,000 air weapons have been handed in so far for destruction. There are an estimated half a million air guns in Scotland. A New York financier who owns Gamo and BSA has bought Daisy. Bruckman, Rosser, Sherrill and Co, known as BRS, has acquired air gun maker Daisy Outdoor Products. Founded in 1886, Daisy makes youth air guns and accessories. British air gunners Alistair Pearce and Olivia Manson have each won an MPR sporter rifle, donated by Air Arms. They're the under-18 champions at the British Shooting National Target Sprint Series final. They completed three 400-metre running stages and knocked down five targets in each of the two 10-metre air rifle shooting stages using the Air Arms MPR sporter in the fastest times. Harbour officials at Whitehaven have had to defend feral pigeon control with air guns after a passerby complained. The birds are being shot with an air gun on Whitehaven Harbour as part of a hygiene clampdown in the town to help the local fish and shellfish industry. American TV has taken a leaf out of the YouTube book. There is now a TV show in the USA called Build Your Own Air Gun. Tom Gaylord, Tyler Patner and Rick Ward join Rossi Muriel to take a look at the new Zombie Slayer kit. 
It's a build-it-yourself air gun that uses a drop-free magazine and reloadable cartridges, and the show is on the Pursuit Channel. Larry Large is back in town. The Texan air gunner we covered on Airheads recently made some press when he shot a rogue zebu bull. The aggressive farm animal from Groveton, Texas, has put several hog and deer hunters up trees in the last two years. He used a 45 cal Air Force Texan air rifle about 20 seconds after this photo was taken. Crossman's Benjamin Pioneer Airbow might have captured the imagination of air gunners, but it's fallen foul of the American Archery Trade Association. The ATA accused Crossman of not paying a tax towards conservation efforts required by bow companies. Crossman denies this, even though pneumatic weapons are exempt from the tax. Another method of shooting arrows from an air gun has come to market. Air Venturi introduces the Air Bolt, a 430 grain carbon fibre bolt that may be used in any 50 calibre PCP air rifle with a barrel 22 inches or longer. Available in the US, bolts cost nearly £20 each. And finally, a squirrel appears to ask for help as it tries to escape a fox. A series of pictures by Mark Mason Gardner from London shows the squirrel and the fox, the squirrel wondering what to do and then the squirrel knocking on the window as if asking for help. You are now to date with Hot Air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Next up, turn out the lights because Darren Rogers doesn't need them. We are out with our master of the dark places, Darren Rogers, as he looks to put his thermal sights to the test. He has to tackle a rabbit problem on a farmer's field. Armed with his FX Impact air gun, he is prepping it specifically for tonight's shoot. This rifle is an absolute tinkerer's dream. It is so easy to switch barrels. Um, you need one Allen key to change the probe. Everything else is just with these thumb wheels. Um, and everything on it is adjustable. So you can adjust regulated pressure by altering an Allen key in here. You've got hammer spring tension here, which gives you further adjustment. And then you've also got your main power adjuster here. So in theory, it's infinitely adjustable. So you can fine tune any pellet. So if you want a pellet to run at 864 feet per second, for example, you can make sure it runs at 864 feet per second every shot or if you want it 900 feet per second, it is such an easy gun to, to manipulate and change for your own preferences. Right, I've got pellets, got a magazine. What I always like to do is we're just going to nip out, check zero before we load up and go kill some bunnies. Determined to get this one that wants to eat me. Gotcha. It won't eat me anymore. So as you can see, two minutes spent on the range. We're now spot on zero. So it's only down to me now. I've got no excuses for missing. With the Optics Identifier 60 thermal sight on top of the Gator, we can see more than your average night shooter. And we can even see why there is a lack of rabbits in parts of the fields. Someone's little cat. Obviously out catching mice and voles and chasing young rabbits around. And it doesn't take long before Darren is putting the FX and the thermal sight to work as he bags his first rabbit of the night. So all I use the spot of them for is just to give me a heat source. I said we saw there was a rabbit there. I can't shoot this because there's a neighbouring property behind there and the boundary finishes there so I don't take a shot. But this is one of the beauties with them is as soon as you see a rabbit you get the heat source and there it is. The site is picking up rabbits in the distance that cannot be seen with the naked eye. This is where thermal is a lifesaver. Where the grass is long in here. You can see, nice beautiful right between the ear and the eye. 
classic headshot. But we'd have never found that without the thermal. Right hand rabbit, yeah. After a successful night, we turn in. Fantastic night. That was uh, everything was against us. The grass was too long. Weather's been against us all day, but yeah, the quality of that FX Impact in 2.5 was just superb. For more about FX air guns, go to a-s-i.co.uk. Ace work by Darren there. Now to the wider world of air gunning on YouTube. It is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. Lots about farm pest control this week. After the last episode of humdinging African hunting with our own Rich Leonard, the remarkable Air Arms Hunting SA is back to starlings. Speedy American style pest control on the farm here. Air Guns of Arizona is taking the Brocock Compato bullpup to a dairy to knock off pest birds. And Carl Smith is on the farm, it's all the rage, hunting a mixed bag with a day state airwolf and another Brocock Compato. Another member of the Smith clan, Izzy Liam Smith, is air gun hunting a mixed bag around a farm. Pellet Power is back on his rounds after Feather and Fur. He is using an AGT Vulcan in 2.5 calibre. Moving to the US, Tafaz Fu starts this film with useful info about tethering your air gun to a tank before hitting the jackrabbits and ground squirrels. Pyramid Air has a review of the new ish Gamo Hornet Maxim, an entry level brake barrel that's loaded with more acronyms and proprietary technology than a fighter jet they claim a bit wildly, but they are trying to flog them. And finally, A Fairy Tale, says Air Gun Gear Show. It is the Day State Griffin official launch video, and it has a happy ever after. Links to watch the videos are in this film's description. If you would like to send in a video for air streaming, ping me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. We're back in a month. We'll see you then.